today we built an entire deck around a single creature card that I think deserves a lot more love and attention because it is absolutely wild what this card can actually do. We are talking about Inga and Asika, a 4-4 creature that says it gives all of your other creatures vigilance and now they all have the ability to tap down for more mana to play more creatures, which can be really good, especially because if you tap three of these creatures down to play another creature, you get to draw a card. So it acts as mana ramp and card advantage for you. And you can attack in with your creatures and then do all of this on the end step because of the vigilance mechanic. It's really, really wild if you build a deck full of creatures, which we did here today. And then Falco pairs amazingly with this because you can play cards from the top of your deck as long as you're removing counters off of your creatures, which we're gonna have plenty of counters in this build trust me that's never an issue and then if you cascade that with an inga and a Sika, i mean you're drawing cards you're playing cards from the top of your deck you'll have a battlefield full of creatures really wide really really fast and we have tons of creatures that play really well with other creatures we got torrents here which spits out humans uh soldiers whenever you play a creature card we got elder that triggers one of three abilities when you play a creature card we've got beast caller which grows when you play a creature card Everything loves playing with creatures. And then there's this really sick combination too, where you can tap down everything with Inga and Asika to play your creatures. And then if we have a loyalty on the field, they then on tap on the end step. So it's disgusting how many synergies are actually built into this uh, this deck. But I think you guys are gonna enjoy this. Pretty wild games. Enjoy this if, you, uh, uh, if you're new here though, we do post videos just like this five days a week. So if you enjoy content just like this, if you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing, that would help me out an absolute ton. And I'd greatly appreciate it. With that being said, enjoy the games and we'll see you at the end. Peace. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we are playing a creature-based build around Inga and Asika. This card is amazing. Hold on, let me get my music going here. This card is amazing, man. It allows us to cascade our creatures onto the field very, very quickly, especially when paired with the Falco. Uh, this opening hand looks really good. We've had some really crazy games already with this deck. I'm super excited to bring this one to you guys because it's, it's really interesting, man. It, uh, it can go wild at the end of the game very, very quickly. I'm afraid of sweepers, though. I will be honest with you guys. I do have a little bit of tech in here for sweepers. We've got the uh, Thalia in the build, but um, I don't know, man. If we get hit with sweepers today, that could be a bit of an issue. Willow Geist, okay. You know what? I'm going to go with the Defector Might over the Beast Caller for this uh, turn because I want to make sure that if we get targeted by, you know, any sort of kill spells, which the opponent is running swamps. So I'm glad I played the Defector Might. Oh, yes. Let's go. We've got all the pieces we need now to be successful. Uh, no attacks. This is going to be good, man. I'm surprised I didn't attack with the Willow guys last turn. All right, so they are going to what? Enter this battlefield, mill three cards, then he may return a land card. Pretty good. That Willow Geist is going to probably get very, very big, but we don't care too much about that. We've got plenty of life game. All right, my turn. A land is so clutch. Inga and Asika comes down. And I could play this, but I want to make sure my might is left open for uh, protection. Because again, you know, when they're running swamps, that means they have spot removal. So we got to make sure we're ready for that. All of our pieces are on the field, man. We got everything we could ever ask for right now. This thing can do a couple of things. Uh, all right. They're going to gain four life. Oh, okay. It can hit the might. Okay, fair enough. Well, we're going to lose the might, which is tough, I will say. That's been, uh, it's been keeping us going. All right, what if we go here to draw a card? I like it. Let's go here to draw a card. Pay with creatures. And we get a Thalia. That's kind of nice. Um, I'm going to go Beast Caller first, though. Beast Caller. Let's look at the top five. Let's go get some more lands. Another Pyre of Heroes is not bad. Things are moving, man. Things are moving and grooving right now. Inga and Asika, though, going to get taken out here, it looks like. Dang it. If I could just on tap one more time and that Pyre of Heroes can be a safe haven for my Inga, but... That's a big if. Okay, Sprout. 
Oh, it's looking okay. I think the Inga and the Sika is going to make it through this turn. Love that. Love that. All right. Let's go one, two, and three. And four. We'll get this down. Oh, I paid the mana wrong. I paid the mana incorrectly. That's my bad. All right, let's go with another mana pool here. Land is good. Okay, and then we go... Fight. How about some more mana? I mean, this is just... This is just going crazy now at this point. We're going crazy. All right, and then we leave this open for, uh, you know, the protection. And then what do we do? Do we attack here? Is there any death touch? There's no death touch. But I still don't know if I necessarily want to attack into the opponent here, though, because they could triple up or, you know, quadruple up on my creatures. I'm going to wait just a, another turn or so. I'm not too worried about sweepers from the opponent because they're not running the typical colors for sweepers. Gix command could be pretty brutal, but I, I think we'll be all right. I think we're going to be all right. Oh, yeah, we're good. We're chilling. All right, my turn. We get a Thalia off the top. Let's see what's... Oh, that's really good. Okay. Yes, please. Let's go there. Pay with creatures. Remove the counter off the Beast Caller. The Beast Caller gets its counter right back. We'll get another land down because the land's on top here, so. The more Pyre of Heroes we have, the better. That's a really good card. And... I am going to attack this time, I think. Because we can attack over the top. I don't mind if we lose this because we get the counters off to something else, right? Eh. Maybe just that. I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to say, man. Hard to say for certain if that's the right call. We'll see. I love that we have instant speed whale action on their turn. I think next turn, if we swing with everything, we should have lethal. I think. I mean, I didn't exactly do the math or anything. I'm just kind of going off of my eyeballs here, but. <laughs> All right, let's see how they block here. They could have a, you know, like I said, a double block against the beast caller and uh, we'll pass those counters off to something else. All right, this doesn't seem like too much of a complicated issue. It's either you double block the beast caller and let me get the counters changed or not. Pretty straightforward. So I'll give them a year go here. Hopefully they're not taking too much more time. If we're getting roped here, that'd be unfortunate, especially the way this game was going. It would have been really fun to see this game close out. But if we're getting roped, I'll go ahead and make the edit here now. So, yep, it looks like the opponent's just going to be roping us down the rest of the way, which is super lame and unfortunate because we had um, a really, really fun board state growing here. This could have been a really exciting, you know, ending to a game, but instead the opponent wants to play it this way. That's fine. And they're probably going to rope me the rest of the way. So bear with me. Okay. A lot of time wasted there. Unfortunate too. Again, what a game it would have been to, uh, you know, finish that one out. But GG's, I guess. All right. I mean, that was a fantastic first game. Just really wish I was able to close out on that one. But uh, unfortunately, the opponent had other plans for us. We have to mulligan that. We don't have any green mana with a lot of green creatures. So we got to send it away. This one is much, much better. And we'll do it like so. All right. Um, Just in case we get a two drop here, I'd like to get the defector mine down on one. Just in case. Want to make sure we can get that protection going immediately. Looks like mono green though. Which, honestly, I kind of like that matchup a lot for us, if that's the case. 
Ah, okay. They besage you that away. I get to go ahead and uh, find some uh, land here. I don't mind that at all, honestly, because the opponent running mono green, it means that they don't have a lot of removal, right? I mean, why would you want to take away my protection creature when uh, you probably don't have any kill spells to begin with? You know what I mean? All right, Inga is down. They missed the land drop because they just they wanted to throw away the Pesaju on the Might. Yeah, I, I like our chances here. I really do. I really do. All right, let's get down. I mean, there's a couple things we could do here. I think I'm going to get down the Silverback Elder, though. There's a couple things there, but yeah, I don't know if I wanted to go Falco or, uh, or not. I think I want to start trying to ramp up here with the Elder. Oh, okay. They're running Swamps. So I stand corrected. They definitely have potential kill spells here. Which changes a lot. <laughs> it changes a lot of what uh, I thought this was. I may regret this. I hope not. But I might. All right, let's see if we get here. Uh, let's look at the top five. Get a land. Titan of Industry. Okay, I definitely don't regret that. All right, let's attack in here. Let's get down the Adeline. We want the Titan of Industry, so we're just going to gain the life here. We don't want to reshuffle our build here by getting another land as much as I want to. And uh, this should just about do it, to be honest. Again, uh, not running white. White is going to be our biggest, biggest concern because the only things that really kill us here and, and, and destroy our game completely are sweepers like Sunfall and Farewell. And that is why we also run a little bit of counters in this build. In case we get to that point of the game, we have a counter in hand. We can save the whole team, you know? Bramble, that's it? That's all you got? That's all you got? Alright, let's send everybody here. This should be game. I don't know. They've got to have some sort of kill spell, right? The cottage would come in tapped. Well, I guess if they use Bramble mana, but it's got summoning sickness, so no. Cottage would definitely come in tapped here, and they scoop it up. GG's, we still had a Titan of Industry we were going to drop on their dome piece too. Sheesh. <laughs> Man, I've been on a bit of an aggro kick lately, which is not like me, but um, I've been having some fun with some aggro builds, man. It's a good time, and I actually think tomorrow we're going to be running aggro again. I'm not sure, but I think we're going to be running out a uh, humans build because... I ran into five color humans earlier this week and it was fantastic. So I kind of want to see if we can run it ourselves. Another Golgari list, huh? Okay. A lot of Golgari today. Yeah. All right, I don't love that we're just going to be throwing like a Torrens or an Adeline out there to be take, you know, taken out here, but I think it's a necessary evil, unfortunately. Okay. Sure. Thalia is interesting. I'm not going to lie, that's pretty interesting. Out of these two cards, I kind of want this to get... Well, no, I kind of need the green from this, don't I? Not, I guess not really. Ah, let's go. Let's throw this out there. Let's hope that it can make it through. I highly, highly doubt it. Shieldred. Okay, so it does make it through, which is nice. Um, Shieldred, though, not very nice. Shieldred's pretty deadly. Uh, we got to figure out a way to mitigate that. Oh, why did I not block the rat? Why did I not block the rat? What am I doing? What am I doing? I let that rat off the hook there. 
Okay, next turn we can go Falco and then we can start playing from the top of our deck, which is great. I gotta find some life gain though if we're gonna combat with this shield right here. Ugh, okay. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. We needed that to keep spamming, you know, chump blockers for us, so. Bummer. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I think we just got blown out. I think we just got absolutely blown out here. Yeah, we've taken way too much damage. We're uh, we're a little bit toast here, guys. A third Falco, which is going to happen, unfortunately, every now and then. But, you know, not a good time for it to happen. Four, five, six, and then seven from the extra card draw. <sighs> we are just dead here. I did the math in my head. We are at lethal. So, unfortunately, this is going to be an L. Let them kind of play this turn through, though. You never know. They might mess something up. I doubt it, though. All they got to do is swing with all, and they've got it, so. Yep. Well, things just didn't quite go our way here. If we had gotten our, um, our might down on turn one... This would look completely different, obviously, but uh, not having that was a little bit of a bummer. Uh, I feel like we could have won that if I did things a little differently. I don't know. Maybe not. GG's. Okay. Well, you know, it is what it is. I, you know, if we get an ape down too late game, uh, we can combat with those uh, those shieldreds all day long too with the uh, extra life gain off the elder. Assuming it didn't doesn't die, obviously. We've been, we've been in those types of games is why I bring that up. Um, we've been in a game one time where we were kind of at a stalemate with an opponent who had a Glissa on the field for so long. And uh, our Silverback Elders were just keeping us, you know, well in the game there because of the, the life gain. And we're going against Mono Red second here. Uh, don't love that. This could also be pretty bad for us. We need to find um, a two drop. A two drop and a four drop. Got to get this curve out nicely. Otherwise, we're in trouble. All right. Another land is not helpful, unfortunately. Feldon comes down. We've, we've, you know, we've not taken as much damage as I would have thought we would be taking right about now. We've also got a Torrens coming in, so feel okay. I feel like our chances are high of being able to get down to an Elder. Okay, yeah, we blocked that all day. Absolutely. Go down to nine. That's a card. Because it's also going to spit out another blocker for us. Actually, yeah, that's really good. I will take that every day of the week. All right. So we got two blockers now. And we hopefully only take one here. Hopefully. And uh, we get the Elder down next turn. And then we win the game. Did we give him two cards here? Yeah, I feel like we have to... Monstrous Rage. Okay. I don't know why they wouldn't save their Feldon there, but to each their own, I guess. They got what? A land? Very nice. One, two, three green sources. So the plaza is just fine to play. And then we play this out. And like I said, we should be able to win the game here as long as they can't dish out five damage this turn. They have one over the top. I can block the down low. It looks like they drew another land. Thank God. Good game. GG's. It is over. Double ape is unbelievably powerful for us here. Now we just sit back and we gain life. We gain eight, li eight life a turn to be exact.
Oh man, how do you come back from this if you're mono red? I mean, they drew way too many lands for sure. Well, they clearly have like another monstrous rage effect, you would think. Yeah, it's not enough power to pump into that. They're going to throw it down on the Phoenix Chick here if they have it. Yep. No surprise there. We eat four damage. Man, these, these came in clutch like literally right at the perfect time. At the exact perfect time. All right. And now we can start smacking them. Start smacking them. We'll leave back one to make sure we have some blocks. All right, we do kind of need, uh, let's see, let's see. Yeah, we protect that, right? We do kind of need to get a, uh, a creature off the top, though, because without creatures coming off the top, we're just going to keep taking this damage over the air, so. Yeah, no creature, that's tough. All right, not good, but... I can keep the pressure on and we can race all day long. I think we're going to be fine. I mean, there's so many things I could be doing here, to be honest. I could be giving protection from red on my other elder and swinging through. I don't know. There's a lot of things I could do here. Maybe I should have been pressuring even harder. Who knows? I feel like with two elders down, we have the luxury of being able to play slow and just kind of chill our way to the end but I may end up regretting it. We'll see. Do they attack with the squee? Big question of the day. They do. Wow. Interesting decision. Monstrous rage. Oh, it's play with fire on this. Okay. Well. We'll protect it. All right, give me a creature off the top, which is 99% of my builds. Come on. There it is. That'll do it. That'll solidify. I mean, it was already dead either way because either way, we had the attacks, but... That'll do it. Oh, man. Mono red, you almost had me. You almost had me. Too many lands early on, allowing me to get the silverback elder down. That was a downfall. That'll do it, man. That'll do it. Love it. All right, man. I mean, we take those. Mono Red is a is always a good one, man. It's always good to beat the Mono Red decks. Always good. Life gain in this deck is very helpful. Um, opening hand looks looks questionable. I will be honest. Uh, the mana is not great. I do need blue to get this down. I think I'm gonna have to mulligan that one. This is a lot better. Uh, yeah, I think this is the way to go. And then we'll throw out the, you know, the curve out here, the Thalia, Adeline. I mean, that's a really nice curve out. So pretty solid mulligan there. Sheesh, pretty good mulligan. We got to get this win here so we can go back to diamond tier two. Got to get this W. Mastermind and they played on their turn, huh? Interesting. I do need Thalia to survive because I need the white mana to access the Adeline here. And the only way I can, well, actually, never mind. Adeline's also legendary. What am I saying? Sorry, my brain stopped working for a second there. All right. So they're Esper and it looks like straight up fairies here. Interesting. All right. Well, this is going to be tricky because now they do have access to counter spells, but their counter spell for fairies is typically going to be the two mana counter spell. So Adeline should hit. And you are correct, sir. They don't have a very good block against the 1-1 one -one right now, so that's getting through, and that is going to be mana later for us to use, hopefully. I don't think I've seen anybody play Esper fairies. Pretty interesting. Adding the white in there for what purpose, I don't know. All right, another Plaza of Heroes. Let's get down the Falco, of course. That can go over the top, and it can do a really good job of blocking 
Um, you know what's crazy here is I think I'm okay with trading this with the shieldren. All right, let's trade. If you want to trade? Let's trade. And then I can stop the damage in the air with the Falco. I think that honestly favors me. If they have another shieldren, then of course it doesn't. But why wouldn't they, you know? Why wouldn't they? Give me something good off the top. That is really good. Okay, chilling. Is it gonna die though? I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna die, but I have a feeling it will. God, I hope not. I really, really hope not. If we can just get one trigger off of it, you know, get some lands maybe, or even just some life gain. Just give me one hit. I would be very, very happy. Man, a second shield right there is just wildly bad for us. Very strange attack. Ah, uh, they can pump this upwards to three, three counters. I have another Falco, so I'm, I'm okay with making a trade here if they want. All right, no trade's gonna be made here. That's tough. That's actually a really good attack now that I'm looking at it. Sheesh. Okay. Well. I guess that'll have to do. I can always Soaring City the uh, Mastermind back to their hand at some point. All right, Thalia's out there, so there's no go for the throat here or anything like that. So Silverback's gonna get another go here. All right, first thing is first, we play out the Falco. And let's gain four life. Wish I knew I was on top here. That would have influenced whether or not we took life there or not. Okay. And do we gain another four life here? Yeah, because the Titan's on top. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Okay, so we got one, two, three. Okay, so we can actually bounce the Fairy Mastermind back to the opponent's hand here. Let's say go. Uh, actually, hold on. Do we attack? I think we attack here because we don't plan on blocking with this and there's nothing in the air it can block. So we might as well send it through, right? Okay, that's that's annoying, but not the end of the world. They should have done that before I got all of my extra life gain with it. That's to say the least. I hope they keep pumping that fairy mastermind. That would be really good. All right, so now they don't have a say in what they discard. Could be a lot of lands and they might get screwed here. We'll see. Nice. That's so good. That's so good. All right, Fairy Mastermind goes back. I can play the bounce game too, my guy. All right, we kill this. We chump this. All right, and then we can Titan of Industry here, blowing up their wedding announcement. Oh, it's so good. Oh, these top decks have been so nice to me. Um, what do we do though? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Because there's a lot of really good plays and options here, huh? I think blowing this up is going to take precedence. Plus, this has got a potential block over top on the Rafine because of the reach. Right, I like this because the shield counter is actually going to make it to where Shieldred can't even attack either. Oh, uh, we are locked in, baby. We are locked in. Shieldred can't get through because of the shield counter. And then Rafine can, you know, attack if they want to die. So have at it. What a game, huh? What a game. Esper Legends. I thought it was fairies at first, but starting to feel like an Esper Legends build. Here's the fairy master mastermind. If they attack, that would be really wild. Because the most they can pump the shield right now is two. And it would die to the Titan. 
Not a wise decision in my opinion. Easy decision for me there. And that should do it. I don't know why they did that. That was very not wise <laughs> to say the least. Um, and then do we attack? Uh, I think we keep pressuring them with the Falco, but we leave back the Titan of Industry for blocks here. And then next turn we get the uh, Inga and Asika and that should just about do it, to be honest. That should do it. We're going to be at almost full health here next turn, especially with two silverbacks going, man. It's going to be crazy. Counter spells are good. Let's go Inga and Asika. Let's gain four life. And they counter it. Okay. I'll pay it. Inga and Asika are way too good to not that there all right and then we attack with everything except for the might and Thalia and then we pay the extra mana to play out the silverback elder which is tapping pretty much everything here which does kind of expose me to kill spells I don't think I really care though because well yeah I don't really care if I am exposed to kill spells here because they probably want to blow up the Titan yeah, no, this is fine. This is fine. Gain four. Back to 20. 20 to 20. Got the counter spell in hand. Got a second silverback elder out. And uh, we're about to run away with this game. GG's, man. Oh, what a game. What a game, dude. Them attacking him with Shieldred was mind boggling. Um, I really think that was their only way to keep the ball rolling here and uh, if they would have waited one more turn maybe to try to pump it above that seven threshold so it wouldn't die but you know they got a little eager there so gg all right looks like we got time for one more run through here and uh yeah i'm excited man this 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 deck was fun this deck was a lot of fun uh the opening hand here is pretty good i've got the the mana to work with here i've got uh the screlv my early so this should end up pretty good for us. Mono red looking to maybe burn out the Skrells Might with the play with fire. Or a bolt. A bolt works as well. Alright, we've got a loyalty hit here at instant speed. We're probably going to take a lightning strike to the face or not. Is this like a big red? Yeah, it's something a little bit different than what we've normally seen here. Let's avoid that one point of damage here with the block. Inga and Asika. And we're chilling. Let's hope Inga and Asika can survive though. There are some red spells that do up to four damage. It's pretty rare the opponent runs those, but this opponent's not running your traditional mono red, so it wouldn't be that surprising. All right, I mean, they had to invest two kill spells into it. I guess that's not that bad, if you really think about it. Not terrible. And if I get out the Virtue here, actually, um, I can kind of scale with the Urbrask's Forge to sort of race them here. At least gives me, like, a backup plan. We can go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but if they burn out my 3-3 here, obviously, that'd be pretty bad, but... And they do. Looks like a strangle coming down or something. They're looking at their graveyard. Maybe Bloodthirsty Adversary or... Calamity. I see, I see. Lightning Strike to the face. Strangle to the creature. Pretty cool, man. I haven't seen a Calamity in a minute. That would have been a good one to counter too, huh? Ooh. All right, let's do this. 
The fact that they had to use a whole calamity there to get rid of my token tells me they don't have another way to kind of burn out this uh, Falco. Okay, strangle. I'm guessing they probably just found that one. All right, we're in trouble here. Not gonna lie, we're in a little bit of trouble. Need some life gain. Another Falco? Are you kidding me? Ay, that's not good. Okay, well, we just gotta uh, absorb as much damage as possible. Look to counter something here. Create a token would be nice. They probably paid the two, and then I counter it again. All right, seems good to me. Uh, it just kind of stinks that we're like literally one step behind um, the five powered creature though. You know what I mean? Such a bummer. I need something big here, man. Need something big here. Something with life gain. That is big. That is in fact big. And this combo's online. I actually haven't even been able to hit this combo before. This is actually going to be really good. All right, let's go. Let's go with an attack. Okay. Let's get the Torrens down. We draw a card. It's a Thalia. Not bad. Let's get the Thalia in. Yes, now we're cooking, man. Now the trample is kind of meaningless with the Thalia out there. Oh my gosh. We did it, bro. No, we didn't. We died. <laughs> I, I thought, I thought we won that game. Oh, I was so amped up, man. That's a pretty funny way to end it, though. I can't lie. Uh, that was too funny, dude. We had the first strike to stop the trampler from getting through too. Oh, that was so close. We were one turn away, and then they had to get a lightning strike. That is going to do it for me today, guys. We'll be back here again tomorrow with another video for you to make up for the video we lost this week. There will be a Saturday video, so be on the lookout for that. It's a really sweet mono green list, and uh, this deck was so much fun, and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, Inga and Asika is an absolute treat whenever we get a chance to play it. Love that card. I think it. I don't think I've seen anyone else run it. I'm sure plenty of people have. I just haven't seen it myself. So it's always fun to play those types of cards that I know aren't getting that much love. You know what I mean? But um, anyways, again, hope you enjoyed it for what it was. And I really appreciate you sticking with me all the way to the end. Huge shout out if you did. And uh, lastly, a big thank you to the Marty Mob. If you guys don't know, the Marty Mob is the membership program on this channel. So a huge shout out to the people who help support me monetarily every month. It really means the absolute world to me. I appreciate it so very much. Thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you next time. Till then, peace out. Hit up three times like a hat trick. Yeah. The name is says you know Patrick. Yeah, yeah. If you play him, then it's tragic. Hit him with the mythic, yeah, that's magic. Yeah. Ooh. FTG, that's what you'll see if you like and subscribe. Where's the upload, man? Uh, man, all of the time. Coming with the best decks, this is the meta. This ain't cheap.